Hello friends, I'm gonna try something fun today. So over the past six months, uh, I've been playing around with different equipment setups for uh, horns and mouthpieces and reeds and just experimenting with some things that uh, typically I would not have done when I was playing and teaching full-time uh, several decades ago. Uh, I found in, probably was college, I found a setup that I liked that kind of worked for me for the different styles of playing. Uh, and I stuck with it for the majority of my playing career. Uh, I tweaked things, you know, tried different things here and there, but always kept coming back to the same types of setup that worked. So I thought it would be fun to go through three different horns, same mouthpiece, same read. All of these clips were played within 15 minutes of each other. Um, it's a pretty dead room, no post-production, uh, single take on these clips. And just to see the differences from the audience side of what these three saxophones, three very different types of saxophones sounded like, and to see uh, opinions, you know, who liked what, can you match them up, um, likes, dislikes, you know, whatever uh, you guys have feedback on. So, uh, the competitors. Horn number one, uh, this is a Selmer Paris Super Action 80 Series 2 uh, that I've had since 1994. It was a 1990 build. Um, for those who know about Selmer, you know, there's, there's so much to say. They inspired a lot of the saxophone manufacturing been around forever. Um, don't want to say necessarily the gold standard, but uh, very, very, very popular. And this horn has been great to me. I'd say probably 95, 98 percent of my playing through my career has been done on this horn. Uh, lots of hours, lots of miles. Uh, it's been very flexible for me and I love it. So that's horn number one. Horn number two, uh, as I mentioned, there's been a lot of inspired, summer inspired uh, Manufacturers, this is a nickel silver tenor made by Kessler and Sons Music in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they are assembling their own saxophones. This is their handmade custom model. They'll set it up however you like. Um, like I said, the parts are manufactured overseas and then the assembly is done in their pro shop. Uh, when I was looking for a secondary or a backup tenor sax, um, spent some time looking around and I called Kessler Music and spoke to Dave Kessler for about 30 minutes on the phone. And he was great in giving me a manufacturing, you know, uh, information on what they do, how, you know, what my style of playing was, how I like my horn set up, things like that. And they sent me a custom horn uh, and, and I played on it for about a week and just love it. It's a lot of fun. It's a nickel silver, which is not traditional brass. This is uh, nickel zinc and copper. So it's a little different body than uh, traditional brass, but it is, since it is silver inspired, the key work and the ergonomics are very similar to my series two. So the transition between the two horns was, was pretty fluid. So that's one of the reasons I, I ended up keeping this one. So that's horn number two. And horn number three is the Franken tenor. Some of you guys may have seen this on Facebook. This is a mid 1950s, maybe late 1950s uh, Busher aristocrat. These were uh, probably the last of the decent aristocrat line from Busher. And this horn was given to me. Uh, it was found at a school where I was teaching in the marching instrument closet. Uh, the, the instructors and the directors had no idea it was there. And they said, oh, please take it. It's just cluttering up the place. It had been beat to death from years and years and years of marching, probably 60s, 70s and 80s. And the neck that came with the horn was absolutely crushed. So at the time, um, I didn't have the money to sink into this. Finding a original busher neck was gonna be problematic back in the 90s, so um, I stuck it in my attic and honestly forgot I had it until we moved to our new house. So the uh, the manufacturing has come such a long way in the last couple decades. This is a Chinese manufactured neck uh, design for these older big bore saxophones. It is called a power neck. I think I paid $100 for it on eBay and I just was curious to see how it would play on this horn. And it actually played okay. I think I posted a, a short clip of uh, of some notes, but I sent it off and had them replace a couple pads at the local repair place and had them tweak it a little bit just to make it playable. Uh, and it did okay. So as an extreme difference, I thought I would do a sample on the busher as well. So there you have it. One very old vintage horn from the fifties. Uh, my tried and true Selmer series two that I've had for almost 30 years and a brand new Kessler Custom Handmade, um, which is a inspired by the Selmer Series 3 line. So uh, I'll let you guys hear the clips and we will talk after that.
And there we have it. Three samples, three different horns. I'm curious to see what everyone's thoughts are on the on the three types. Uh, you can leave YouTube comments, Facebook comments, whatever. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this as you know, a younger player, I was trying to find my own sound and I'd ask a lot of questions of players and teachers. How do you get certain brightness or dark sounds or certain tones? And I found out pretty quickly it's it's so much based on the player. Um, equipment plays a part, you know, your horns, reeds, mouthpiece, necks, you know, whatever you want to tweak. Uh, but the player provides such a huge component of the sound in all the methods, uh, you know, the breathing, the armature, your, your facial structure, things like that. Um, but I never really had a chance to compare what the player perspective sound versus the audience perspective. What I mean by that is um, these three horns give completely different player perspectives. So as I'm playing one horn, the feedback, what I'm hearing behind the horn may be completely different what you're hearing on the audience side. Uh, and each horn is different in that manner. So you know, certain horns given certain types of feedback, I may think they sound completely different from the player side. And if you're hearing it from the other side of the horn or in the audience, there may not be that much of a perceptible difference. So I wanted to record these three horns back to back, get my perspective on what they sounded like, and then listen to a flat uh, audience side recording to see what differences there really were. Uh, and it was a little surprising. Um, there were some things, I don't want to give away too much, there were some things I was expecting and some things I was not expecting. So again, uh, this was kind of an experiment for me. Uh, I love doing stuff like this to kind of prove or disprove concepts or misbeliefs that I've held for way too long. So uh, again, enjoy. If you have any questions, feel free, uh, feel free, give a comment, give a shout out. Uh, if not, hope you enjoyed it.